So I, like many others, are probably fumbling around trying to find something to do while we wait for Alpha 4, which is now only two days away. So I thought I would look at Incursion, and actually there was spark, spark some discussion on the forum. Uh, I, I've been going back to it a bit because maybe because the premium beta guys are seeing uh, these single player missions, and I figured uh, it might be interesting to go back and have a look at them. Uh, and I went back to Incursion and found that I remember it being quite a challenge when I started in Alpha 2. Um, went back and had a few goes at it and surprisingly found myself just clearing it on the first uh, few attempts. I thought, oh, have they, have they nerfed this? Have they made it a bit easier? Um, or have I genuinely just got better? Um, I'm not entirely sure it might be a bit of both. Um, but yeah, so I thought, let's go over Incursion, particularly for all the premium beta players who are stuck just playing the single player missions. And I think you look at the forums, that clearly some people are finding a bit of a challenge to uh, Incursion. I mean, certainly when I started playing it, it was a challenge to get through Incursion and uh, get to the end, and it was quite frustrating. So, um, Incursion is all about these uh, waves of fighters that you have to battle your way through. And obviously they go up in increasing difficulty. Uh, the first few waves you shouldn't have much problem with. If you're, if you're not getting through the first, I don't know, well if we say first four waves at least then there really is some problem there. <laughs> I don't mean that in a nasty way but yeah you need to practice a bit more. The first four waves should be pretty easy. Um, it's really the, uh, the last three waves that are that are the difficult ones. So, some techniques. Let's see. Um, when you're only fighting one fighter like this, it's fairly easy power management. You just stick all your power to weapons once you're on them um, and hammer them down. You can flick between engines and weapons, but generally you shouldn't have to touch any power towards your shields because you shouldn't really be losing your shields all that much. Um, making a bit of a meal of this guy, but uh, you want to be able to try and take them down before their shields come back online. Uh, don't quite manage it here, look. Reason's obvious, you, know, you need to then spend time taking their shields down again to get through to their hull and, uh, and take them out. But there we go, eventually you get them. So the next tip is, the next waves always appear straight ahead. There you go, see? So, when you clear a wave, immediately just face forward, don't, don't uh, manoeuvre in any different directions, and just boost forward and close the distance on the next wave that's going to be on its way. So here we're up against a Cobra, which will be a bit harder work now. But again, there's only one of them. You see, I used the uh, Railgun, or as it's affectionately known, the Sneeze Cannon, <laughs> which I do like. Um, it's a bit pointless though in this mission, to be honest. You can probably do most of this with just using your fixed beam laser. The uh, sneeze cannon is, you know, it's slow to use. You have to lead the target quite well. Um, and I just find generally it's, it's not all that effective against fighter craft like this. Except like that, when they're standing still. <laughs> Generally you'll see we're kind of flicking around the power between um, engines and weapons. So power to engines to, to tighten your turns, make your turn quicker. You can see obviously this being a Cobra it can outrun me quite easily so I'm having to uh, chase him down. Your beam weapons, the power of them trails off with range basically. So too far away, I wouldn't really bother using a beam laser much beyond say 2,000 metres, 2 kilometres. They'll hit but they won't do a massive amount of damage so try and get up close 500 metres to let's say 1,000 probably, something like that. I've not done any in-depth analysis on it. So last of the single ones I think this phase, one little uh, Imperial fighter. These are quite weak and that's one thing to do is maybe focus on the um, um, the more difficult ships first and not worry too much about these Imperial fighters. 
Those explosions are pretty, aren't they? <laughs> okay, so here's the uh, multiple ships coming there. Three targets. So we're going to get in on them quick. Get some shots on that sidewinder. Any stupid ones amongst you will notice I'm using some head tracking here to um, spot targets a bit quicker. Look up, track them on you through the top of your canopy and just gives you a little bit of an advantage lining up on them <coughs> when they come into your forward vision if you see what I mean. So here you can see I'm taking fire from one of the two guys behind me but I'm focusing on finishing off the guy in front. Don't get distracted from engaging with another ship. Pick one and finish him unless there's some reason that you really can't. Like he's disappearing into uh, the distance. Here's a good example of what happens when you get close. They're very hard to um, track quickly. So it's easier to just side slip here or downward slip, get some distance from him <coughs> and pick him off at a bit more of a sensible distance, kind of 500 metres or so. Also don't uh, hold down that beam laser if you can help it. Just save some of the uh, energy and reduce some of your heat build up by trying to only fire it when you know it's going to hit. I'm, I'm not perfect in this sense but um, I try. <laughs> so one last guy here. One thing I need to think about is my shields are taking a bit of a damage, I think they were what, a ring or two down. So I need to think about um, building those back up. Finish this guy off there. How you get this every now and then. The NPCs sometimes, it seems to only be the uh, Federal fighters, they seem to just do this flying in a straight line thing. Makes them very easy targets. So. Okay, next big Four, yes, four on this one. So I'm going to get round, pick one, work him down. It's an Imperial fighter. Sorry, Federal fighter, we keep calling them Imperial fighters. Too much Star Wars. So I'll pick that guy off first. This guy, it's a sidewinder, is it? Yeah, oh no, it's not. He's just easier to line up onto, he's a bit further away. And he's also doing the fly in a straight line thing, which is useful. He won't last long. Okay, ooh. When a ship flies straight in front of you like that, just, just take him, you know, it's a nice easy uh, drop onto target there. Let's get this one. to engines, get round to him, do the turn and burn fight, who can pull the turn the quickest, and then when he's generally in sight, power to weapons, hammer him down. Very easy kill really, it's fine straight. Right now, boosting, boosting, because here comes the big uh, the big phase. This is, what is it? It's four sidewinders, is it? What? Three sidewinders and a fighter. But straight away, I'm going to get some shots on that sidewinder. I'm kind of racing to get him out. Um, you're going to have to accept that you'll, you'll take some shots from, from the other three while you get in this guy. But that's what your shields are for, so trust them. 
Let's get round onto the next one. And pick him. I'm just going to pop some shots on this guy. I'm not entirely sure, but I think if you get a shot on an NPC, it kind of adjusts their behaviour a bit, and turns them from attacking to defending. So I think it's quite useful. I, I always do it if I can. If I get an easy shot like that, even if I'm not going to kill, just just pop a, a shot on him and it, I think it changes their behaviour a bit. So you'll notice our shields are down there, so I really need to hurry this up. Keep an eye on that hole. Two left, and those shields are coming back on. Yeah, so we've got a fighter and a sidewinder. So I'm going to get rid of the sidewinder first. The fighter will be easy pickings. Get away from that fighter a little bit. Close this gap on the sidewinder. Okay. So we're almost there now. There's just one last guy to do. And he's going to be easy pickings. Um, but what I do want to check is my shields. I want the, the next ship is a, a single anaconda by itself. So I want to give those shields time to, to come back up. So I'm not going to rush to kill this guy. But yeah, they're almost back up now. Okay, there we go. So, here we go. Boost, boost, boost. Straight ahead. Look for the anaconda and we want to get on his back doors as quick as we can. If that's not too rude. Sniff his exhaust. Here he comes. I'm going to drop right down behind him. Okay, now, all you need to do here, really, is concentrate power between your systems and your weapons. Forget your engines. He's not running anywhere. Um, Generally, I start off with, you can see, two pips to, to systems, which is shields, and concentrate on weapons and bringing your shields down. When you see your shields kind of get towards the, uh, the red on the inner rings, consider boosting some power to, to systems to just keep them topped up. If you drop all power to weapons and nothing to systems, then you're going to feel it, particularly when he does this. When he, when he pulls up, he can bring more weapons to bear, and that's when you suddenly start taking a few more shots. So that's why you want to adjust with vertical thrust and stay behind him. Yeah. Just work your shields down. Use your sneeze cannon a bit here if you want to. Just let them cool off a bit. Just hang tight. Stay in his exhaust. Watch your shields. Certainly watch your shields until he's kind of, you know, 50% on his hole or less. Uh, once you get to a certain point and it's, you know, he's lost the battle, you can divert all power to weapons. Which I might do in a sec. And um, when you're happy, you know, you, you know your hull can hold out, you can switch to uh, weapons and bring him down. That's it, really. Much more to it than that. And then you finally clear incursion. Give it a go, quick before Alpha 4 turns up. They're all too busy trading. <laughs>